Between the coronavirus and massive wildfires, students must adjust to one of the most challenging fall semesters of all time. Student housing is a headache once CSU abruptly closes dorms, while SGSU takes in fire victims and the virus spread. Recently, we've also talked about the ramifications of that. You know, you could send everybody. Fires take their toll on area residents, including the homeless and farm workers. Evacuated with four goats, about five chickens, and one of my cats. And animals take refuge away from the fire area under the kind care of volunteers. Updating you starts now. From the School of Journalism and Mass Communications at San Jose State University, your source for what's happening with a fresh perspective on today's issues. You're watching Update News. Welcome to Update News. I'm Hoi San Chong. And I'm Manuel Romero. Campus life is much different than in any other semester. Most classes are taking place online and social distancing regulations are in order. San Jose State has a lot of big changes for students and staff. Update news reporter Jennifer Hernandez is live on campus with the story. Jennifer? Manuel, we are live at San Jose State in front of the Bacardo Business Complex. While this building is normally jam-packed full of students racing to get to class on time, it's one of the main, many buildings that will remain closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The university is not open to the public and is limited to essential staff, faculty, and students who either live or attend class on campus. There are around 2,300 students living in the dorms, and 10% of classes are taking place in person. Stephanie Mello is one of the few who is currently living through these changes. It's different being in the dorms and not being able to do like the regular things that you can do. I am a first year student here. This is my first semester, so it just sucks not having that experience. This pandemic has also incited new campus rules such as student IDs required to enter buildings, masks are a must, and even the library has taken a big hit with new regulations. I'm an employee at SJSU at the library part. Um, we're not open right now, but we're doing express pickup online, which is like you can order books and come pick them up. The university is offering resources for staff and students that are on or off campus. Such as online ordering from the school bookstore, personal protective equipment such as masks, wipes, or sanitizers that can be requested online, and many other links that can be found on San Jose State's website. The health and safety of everyone on and off campus is the number one priority this semester. The university is doing all it can to protect students, staff, and faculty as we all bear through the changes together. Live on campus, Jennifer Hernandez, Update News. Thank you, Jennifer. As if fires aren't enough, fires in a time of pandemic pose small problems. How to keep people socially separated while they're evacuated. Nicole Albella is live in Benicia with more. Nicole. Question. In a year already engulfed with the pandemic, fires are now a threat to students. Nearly 40 UC Santa Cruz students and faculty have evacuated to San Jose State for shelter. Meanwhile, CSU Chico students were forced to leave the dorms due, due to rising cases of COVID. SJSU campus housing is doing what it can to accommodate people evacuated from fires in the Santa Cruz area, while keeping everyone socially separated. We were the closest institution to our, our, our sister school uh, in the UC system um, that had the residence hall capacity to be able to host students. It was the right thing to do. Dorm residents were not notified that SJSU was housing UC Santa Cruz evacuees. We were not required to do that. Um, it would just be a courtesy, um, you know, for them to know that some people from another university are now living with them. The lack of notification did not negatively affect certain students. The way I think that it's amazing that, you know, like they're helping them out and stuff. And like I said, I don't really com come into contact with anybody on campus. So the number of residents in the dorms has been limited to 50% of its normal capacity. 
Students are placed in individual rooms to limit the spread of COVID-19. While SGSU is allowing more residents into housing, CSU Chico has closed its dorms to all students and canceled all in-person instruction. I'm not necessarily annoyed at the school. I'm more annoyed with the students and their irresponsibility. For now, a limited number of classes and dorm residents continue at SGSU. Recently, we've also talked about the ramifications of that. You know, you could send everybody home and if they're infected, then they go home and they infect their family. So is that the best thing either? I, I don't know. It must suck for people that moved to campus specifically for that reason, because I know that everyone's situation is different, you know. Colleges will continue to reevaluate procedures to help students through fire season and the pandemic. Live in Benicia, Nicole Albalar, Update News. Not only is the campus under an unprecedented pandemic, but Mayor's wildfires have forced thousands of people out their homes. We began our coverage with student meteorologist Joshua Gilman. Meteorologists have been monitoring a high pressure system coming across the Bay Area this weekend. It's technically still summer through September 21st, so this heat is no surprise. Currently, the main wildfires within the Bay Area the SEU, CZU, and LNU Lightning Complex fires are mostly contained with both the SEU and LNU being about 80% contained and the CZU at about 48% containment. SJSU meteorology graduate student Holt Hanley has a YouTube channel where he analyzes weather events such as wildfire and drought, which is currently a literal hot trend. I would say the uh... Biggest threat right now is probably the Creek Fire. That's the one that's in Fresno County. And the reason for that one is just it's growing like crazy right now. I heard one Cal Fire representative say today that in that area, 80 to 90 percent of the trees are just completely dead. It made like the biggest pyrocumulus that I guess Dr. Clement said he's ever even heard of in all of like recorded history. <laughs> So it basically formed its own giant thunderstorm. There was a bunch of lightning. Hanley says all across his social media that he wants to be a part of the solution one day. Half Moon Bay local Joe Lee shares her thoughts on this historic air quality. So it's like really hitting home that like all of these, the whole California is suffering, you know, like not only Southern California and in Northern California, and then like the winds aren't helping at all because it's just blowing all the smoke everywhere. And later on in, in the newscast, I'll have the five day forecast. Back to you. While some businesses are struggling to stay afloat, some students are getting into the entrepreneurial spirit. Being in quarantine really helped me because like I just saw it as like, oh, I have all this time, I might as well just do it. Yeah. Local farmers are working hard to maintain their crops after the bad air quality days during the fires. The air was really contaminated, which still had to work. Farm workers are competing with time. The fruit is temporary. If you do not harvest it in time, when it is ready, it falls to the ground, and there it stays. Crops filled with ashes is not a concern for farm workers or owners. The ashes do not fall directly because the trees have a lot of leaves, and it stays on a leaf. The real concern for farm workers and owners is the current weather. That affects so, so much because uh, they almost didn't open the way it's supposed to. The Moran family says after the fire days, their almond process got delayed. If five or thirty percent of the of the crop is they're not ready. Moran's family members work the farm themselves and worry that they'll have to collect a second harvest. It's gonna be more cost uh, and more uh, it's more time. Local farmers have limited resources to maintain a healthy crop. So much in the weather. And like the Moran family, local farmers are concerned about how fires happening here in California will affect them. Local farmers are hoping for good weather and a lot of water next year. Live in Modesta, Guadalupe, Guadalupe Mictio, update news. When we come back, we'll have more news for you. Jocelyn Akira will be here with a look at business and technology. While some businesses are struggling to stay afloat, 
Some students are getting into the entrepreneurial spirit. Being in quarantine really helped me because like, I just saw it as like, oh, I have all this time, I might as well just do it. The university adapts to the new normal by offering physical education with a different twist. And later on, we'll take you to two places coming to the rescue during the evacuations. A lot of cleaning and carrying going on. Of the news, we'll be right back. Kinesiology and dance classes will look different this semester as the university attempts to provide students a sense of community. Their challenge, keeping students physically active during a pandemic. The flickering sign by the South Garage is just one of the different reminders on campus to be coronavirus safe. While SJSU remains in phase two, the kinesiology department is providing an adaptive version of physical education, which kinesiology chair Tamar Simurgen says is important. I also wanted students, especially the students who are on campus and in student housing, to have an opportunity to have some in-person classes and to develop a sense of community. The building behind me used to be home for Bud Ayers Jr., but now the dance instructor is teaching his students online. Here is Bud Ayers teaching his merengue students. Without a partner, he relies on a broom. This is my partner, okay? She swept me off my feet. Sorry. Ayers says students taking online dance classes can still learn, but there are some elements that an online platform cannot provide. Oh God, the connection, their faces. <laughs> Their, the joy that they get when they, they do something. Students are facing their own challenges as they adapt to dance classes. SJSU dance student Ricky Bierman misses the sense of community. I take normal class with everyone that I'm used to taking class with. And I just want to be in the studio space and not on concrete. <laughs> Whether that space is a concrete area on campus or a bedroom, Bierman believes students should keep on dancing. Keep moving. <laughs> SJSU will continue to be under phase two. The university will continue to provide limited in-person classes and various online classes for PE students. And now we're joined by Jocelyn Aguirre with Business and Technology. More businesses are able to open their doors. Jocelyn, what are business looking like today? Yes, businesses seem to be hit the hardest since the pandemic, so they've been trying their best to adjust, such as businesses being able to open shop outdoors. It's been a tough time for many. Closers are way too common. Kenya Caballero joins us live from San Jose. Kenya? Jocelyn, many barbers and hairstylists prepare to open their doors under the new government protocol. Omar Valencia is preparing to open his barbershop after five months of being closed. I feel really happy that we were going to be basically back in business, so it feels really great. However, things won't be easy for the industry. The government is introducing a four-tier reopening plan that will determine the ability to have your business operating based on your county. COVID-19 will be with us for a long time, uh, and we need to adapt. Part of the adapting plan is the new tier system that was designed to track and determine when a county can move forward with the business reopening. Each color represents a new phase, 
and it also tells you into what extent non-essential businesses can operate based on the cases reported in your county. At this point, like any, anything that they tell us to do, I mean, we're gonna, you know, do it because, I mean, we don't wanna lose our business. The government has created a website to help Californians know in what color their county stands and what can operate indoors. You can go to this page and type in the county Fresno, choose hair salons and barbershops, and then it will pop up and show you what color Fresno is and that sector. Valencia says he will continue to follow the protocols to avoid losing his barbershop. Well, this is what we know what to do. You know, this is the only things that we know uh, about us as barbering. It's, it's been really tough. Just like Valencia, Evan Rogers, owner of Eclipse Nail Salon in San Jose, has been economically struggling. It's been very difficult trying to adapt, uh, but we're trying our best. Rogers is a new business owner and was hoping to open his nail salon in May. But due to the pandemic, they had their grand opening in the outside. He believes they are ready to open in the inside. We are totally prepared to do all of the social distancing, safe me uh, you know, measurements and requirements that they want us to do. Santa Clara has now moved into a different tier, which allows a lot of businesses to open moderately. In San Jose, Kenya Caballero, Update News. Thanks, Kenya. In the midst of this economic uncertainty, some SJSU students are starting small businesses. Update News reporter Fernanda de Velasco joins us live from San Jose. Fernanda? Jocelyn, the sheets such as this, students are starting businesses from their own home because the global pandemic hasn't only affected their health, but also their pockets. Nearly everyone is feeling the effects of the stumbling economy. Even students have to figure out new ways to bring income into their lives. The pandemic really affected me just because I work at a gym. So it's like the number one place that is not going to open anytime soon. So I was like, wow, I either need to look for a job. But finding a job was as hard. Anil Medina makes chocolate covered strawberries and sells them online. She says starting a business can be challenging and getting the word out can be even more difficult. But I started seeing some um, income coming in, so I was like, okay, maybe I can start this as something bigger and I can still like give my mom that extra help. Medina is not the only one who started a business. High school student Kimberly Avalos also took action during the six months she had to be home. Being in quarantine really helped me because like, I just saw it as like, oh, I have all this time, I might as well just do it. Avalos started her own lip gloss line after being inspired by TikTok videos. The students who run their businesses from neighborhoods like this were not the only ones affected. The Bureau of Labor Statistics stated that as of April of 2020, over 20 million jobs had been lost. Matthew Holian is the chair of the San Jose State University Economics Department. He says keeping a positive attitude is essential to keep the economy running. But this situation does force us to look at the way we do things uh, in a different light and and maybe that will lead to some innovations that will, that will um, outlast the pandemic. Professor Holian says students are using their creativity to start their own businesses during these strange economic times. Live in San Jose, Fernanda de Velasco, Update News. Thanks, Fernanda. Businesses seem to have the hang of things, right, Manuel and Hoy? Yes, it's great to see them reopening. In a creative way. When we return, we'll see what the weather holds in store for us. Joshua Gilman will have the weather forecast. People forced out of their homes due to the wildfires have a clean machine waiting for them from the kindness of strangers. And it might look like a scene. Oh, and uh, the by the way, Professor, uh, so. But these animals are not in competition or up for sale. They are guests at the fairgrounds. Stay with us. A Santa Cruz unconventional laundromat is providing a service to evacuees.
It is a unique way to show support for its community. Rotating washer, spinning dryers, and stuck up soaps. This laundromat is doing wildfire evacuees through the laundry for free. When the fires happened and we started to see an uplift in our business from evacuees, uh, we knew it did not feel right for, for that to be a, a source of success for the business. So Robert Williams and his wife Jovia Williams created a laundry car worth $300 at first for evacuees. After writing down their names and addresses, this rechargeable car is ready to use. Especially considering um, where some evacuees uh, had to find shelter uh, was going to be critical. Uh, critical to kind of keeping spirits up, keeping hope to return home up, and, um, and purely just feeling, feeling clean. William says more than $4,000 donation rolled in within three weeks of posting about the laundry map on social media. He used to buy soaps, basket, and providing snacks and beverages to evacuees. Because we are, you know, displaced, and it's a, a weird feeling. It's really surreal. So this kind of brings back the normalcy. The Seabart laundry rooms will continue to providing service for evacuees start from 8 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. every day. 211 program manager Cassandra Flowers says having free laundry service provide evacuees relief now, but the post-fire recovery role can take up more than three years. And I think businesses and anyone in particular uh, should be there to help um, these families to make them feel like, no, we're here to help you. Evacuees walking with basket of dirty laundry, then exits with loads of comfort. This closes, but an entire community's effort is needed for later recovery. Student meteorologist Joshua Gilman is back. This time here had a weather forecast. How's it looking? Well, over the next five days, we're expecting sunny skies during the day and clear skies at night throughout the Bay Area. Across the whole area, it is still going to be a bit hazy due to the ongoing wildfires. The majority of the smoke was coming from the Northern California wildfires. However, now it is mainly moved eastwards. Now, looking at this carbon dioxide graph provided by the San Jose State Air Quality Lab, we see that carbon dioxide levels peaked on September 11th at 489 parts per million, when a normal day should be reading 400 parts per million. However, as you can see by this graph, it has improved and the air quality is clearing up. Now, if you look at the satellite image, we also see that there is clouds off of the coastline, but there is still smoke in the Sierras due to the ongoing creek fire. Moving on to the five-day forecast, starting with Santa Cruz, we see that the high temperatures are going to be in the low 70s and low temperatures will be right into the mid 50s. In San Francisco, the high temperatures are gonna be consistent in the low 70s and we're gonna be seeing low temperatures in the upper 50s. Moving to the East Bay in Oakland, we'll be seeing highs in the mid 70s with lows in the upper 50s as well. And finally, here in the South Bay in San Jose, We'll be seeing high temperatures in the upper 70s with a peak day on Sunday at 82 degrees and low temperatures in the upper 50s. Stay safe out there, everyone. Back to you, Manny and Hoy. Yes, and, and also remember stay cool. Yeah, with a bowl of ice cream or something. And finally today, the fire is not only affecting people in the Bay Area, but their animals. When residents fled the Santa Cruz Mountains, Many of them took their pets and livestock to the Santa Cruz County Fairgrounds in Watsonville. Danny White joins us from Watsonville with a live report. Danny. Thanks, Manuel. The evacuees here have received support from their neighbors of Santa Cruz to help take care of the many animals here. People living in the Santa Cruz mountains had more than fire to worry about when evacuating their homes the past few weeks. They had to bring their animals. And in some cases, they had to get the animals out by themselves. So I evacuated with four goats, about 
five chickens and one of my cats. Debbie Baker is staying with her animals at the Santa Cruz County Fairgrounds. So the first six night, I slept on the front bench of that pickup truck right there. She arrived at the fairgrounds at 3 a.m. after being evacuated, without much help, but the community came together and made it possible. The fair isn't normally set up like you see it here. So then you have to call in people that aren't working. They don't normally have that many employees. With the large volume of animals here at the fairgrounds, it takes more than just the animals' owners to take care of everything. And it's up to the community to help out. Dominique Sembrat is head of the Medium Livestock Barns, housing more than 300 goats, sheep, pigs, alpacas, and small livestock. I showed up one day and there hadn't been anyone else that wanted to take on these two barns, so she needed help, and then it just kind of evolved, and now we run these two barns. It's the dirty work, you know, you picking up the smelly stuff and replacing it. A small community like this is giving you so much, me so much, and accepted, you know, I don't know, us as people, and it's good to give back. You know, we do this for the families that have lost their houses, and, um, it's not a job like we want to do it. We're here to do it for them. So this whole thing is about them. The fairgrounds will be open for as long as evacuees need them. But thankfully for most, the transition of getting back home has begun. In Watsonville, I'm Danny White, Update News. And that does it for this week's edition of Update News. For all of us here, thank you for joining us and see you next week.